Hello and welcome. Welcome to uh, July's newsletter. Oh my goodness, coming into August. It's been a very peculiar month. And I think on Facebook, I saw the classic uh, headline of the moon is being tired of being blamed for everything. And I think we've all felt like that. We've had really uh, peculiar energy shifts, awakenings, awarenesses, all sorts of things going on. But I think for us down here in the Southern Hemisphere, to me, it's almost like that hibernation time. It's that time for introspection, time for old things to surface, and then for us to really take responsibility and change, change how we react to events rather than blaming it on the poor moon or anyone else that happens to be in the way. And as I'm saying that, I'm getting this real sort of itch between my shoulder blades. So there must be something in that. So how has July been for myself? It's been a really interesting month, I have to say. One of the biggest pleasures, joys, and I will say a real honour has been teaching the Angelology course coming to a close in July. And watching the students um, really evolving through the process of becoming aware of angels, feeling supported by the angels, talking to their angels. And I think on some level, just not feeling lonely because it can be really lonely in those winter months. We're, we're at home with our family. We're not out and about, not out at nighttime, not in nature as much as we would normally be. And for one or two of the students, there was a real pivotal moment of connection with their angels, both with their guardian angel, we'll leave that to the very last session, but with some of the other angels, some of the archangels that we, we know and we love and, and we respect their energy and how they're here to help us. And that is always a humbling, a humbling experience. Um, for some of the students like myself, I go through the, the course along with the students. So my emotional baggage comes up, it bubbles up to the surface. And, and I really share that just so that people see that I am human and that I do have to constantly refine and check what is happening in my life constantly. How am I thinking? How am I coping? What am I dealing with? Of course, they have to keep reassessing myself on a very minute level. And um, I would say that what really came up for me when I discussed this openly with the students was the fear factor. And it's an old habit. And so that's why I've called my newsletter Old Habits or Old Friends. And fear is like an old friend, it's a habit. And I've come to realize through this uh, tranche of learning with the angels is that I no longer need to use fear as a, as a tool that motivates me. I've, I've discovered that when fear comes into my, if I'm fearful about something, then as Michael says, it's like challenge accepted and off you go. And I power through, I use the phrase with the students, I'm powering through, I power through my fear. But that's not necessarily a good way to live. It's not necessarily a good energetic way to live. It uses an extraordinary amount of energy on my behalf to power through my fear. And it was such an awakening, such a wonderful insight into my personality, into who I am, that I really decided in July that my life would become fearless and that I no longer needed to revert and, and, and feel that tension in my body to find the right resources or the right emotional responses to deal with what was ever was coming up in my life. And so that was a real awakening for me. And I think we've all developed coping skills or habits or behaviors that are our default mode. Um, and even with some of 
my clients uh, this month in particular, dealing with lots of grief through the, the class, through the students, um, in the physical class, through the students in the online courses, but also with my clients, grief, dealing with grief, the grief of losing someone during lockdown, not being able to say goodbye, losing a partner, even though it's been several years ago, but it's still that pain of loss. And we go into that default mechanism of defense mode or denial, um, whereas actually we'd need to just soften and come back, back to heart space and back to that place of, okay, what, what am I feeling? What am I feeling? And how can I cope with this without feeling these feelings? So it's been a really big month um, just for everyone. And I do feel introspectively, we're, we're, we're all going through it. We're all dealing with these um, agonizing moments. Um, and so what I would say to you is, try not to go into that old habits, find a different tool that is better uh, than what you sort of anticipate. And one of the students, she asked um, a question, just, I think it might have been in the last class actually. And she said, oh, you know, you always wear lovely pendants, Phyllis. And I know you talk about how you wear pendants to help you with your protections and so on. And I do, I set my energy up. and. And she really made me think, and again, so I'd got into this habit of wearing this particular beautiful smoky quartz pendant. And I thought, well, okay, universe, what, what is it that I need to uh, wear right now? So I'm wearing, I'll just hold it up if I can turn it around. It's called Mystic Topaz. Um, and it's topaz, it's bonded with a rainbow foil. So it's blue topaz bonded with a rainbow foil on the back. And I've never worn it. I've had it for years and years and years, 12 years, never worn it. And I thought, oh, I'll put that one on. I didn't know why. And I looked up the, uh, the meaning, the spiritual meaning, and it's all about being fearless, about feeling supported, feeling optimistic, attracting what you need to support you. And I thought, well, that definitely will help support my energy. So a big thank you to the student who asked that question. Because I, even if it's just like a placebo, even if it's just a placebo for me, I have actually felt quite fearless with this particular um, stone, with this particular particular crystal. And, and we've had lots of really weird random processes happening, my husband and I, during July. And it feels like I've just not gone into fear, but certainly gone into a positive strategic mode or a healthy, positive mindfulness approach. And that has brought so much fun and joy into my life. It's, it's lovely moving away from those old habits. So I would really ask you to check and see, are you relying on old habits are they just like old friends they're familiar and we click into them as as a default mode without necessarily thinking how am i supporting myself through this process so it's something really uh, to think about for moving into the august um, energy, the Leo energy, that fire energy. And I know I have lots and lots of Facebook friends. We're all Leos. Lots of personal friends. We're all Leos. We pride together. A Leo to absolutely recognises another Leo. And I feel really proud to be part of this pride of beautiful Leo feminine energy and masculine energy over here in New Zealand. So we're coming into our month of power. Um, is, is it a case of hear us roar? I'm not quite sure in that whole extension of the fearless mode. It will be interesting to see how, uh, how that all occurs as we move into this new month. So it's been a wonderful space to be in and um, as challenging as it has been, we're coming to the end of it now. We're coming into August. We're coming into the lighter evenings, especially for us here in the Southern Hemisphere. 
I say in the Northern Hemisphere, you're coming into the last of the summer wine. So enjoy it, enjoy that uh, sense of beautiful sunshine in the summer months as you come into the back end of your seasons. So what's new? Well, what is new is um, a course, a, a, you, I have run it in the past, only once or twice, not many times, as a mountain retreat. And I've been really looking at this particular course thinking about finding tools that we can support ourselves with, new tools, new ways of looking at healing and supporting ourselves. And many years ago, it would be a good 10 years ago, I read a book by a chap called Brett Bevel. This was a recommendation from one of my Reiki master teachers, so thank you, Annette. And I was really fascinated with the techniques that he had uh, spoken about in his book because I thought gosh I'm doing that anyway I just haven't labeled it or put a process around it but I can through his book and so I got into conversations with Brett asked if I could take some of his techniques and turn them into a workshop and I was very blessed to be given his blessings and so the book itself is called Advanced Reiki Techniques or Advanced Reiki Healing and so I have made this course, which was two full days and an evening. And I'm going to run that as a long weekend, Friday evening plus full, two full days. And it's called Advanced Reiki Energy Healing Weekend Workshop. And each particular technique has its own attunement. So if you haven't been attuned to Reiki, it doesn't matter the symbols and the techniques that we're using have their own attunement. And again, working with Brett on that and using my own um, uh, intuitive, intuition skills, I've come up with each uh, individual attunement for every process. Um, and with this particular course, if you just want to heal yourself on a deeper level. If you're already a Reiki uh, healer of some level, you don't need to be a Reiki master, level one or level two, even level three, you might find that some of these techniques are slightly deeper. If you're a theta practitioner, you might find these techniques are even deeper because absolutely I use my theta healing with them and that's how I started using these techniques. And then I realized that actually it's more akin to Reiki, what he was saying in his book, than it is to Theta, but I do mix the both together. And some of the techniques are quite far out. I have to say it's very challenging. And the people that have been on this course in the past, their lives have quite literally changed. Um, they've released their karma, they've opened their inner child, they've healed the divine child. We use holographic healing. How amazing is that? Working on the, uh, physically working on the astral planes, doing astral projection, which is a follow on from my, um, my multi-dimensional, my fifth dimensional training. Downloading eighth, dimen dimen eighth dimensional energy, not fifth dimensional, but taking up to eighth dimensional. What does that actually mean? What does the dimensions mean? Who are we? as an eighth dimensional being. It's a really wonderful course. So I had put this course out before lockdown and then of course the lockdowns came and there was a couple of people interested. I've, I'm putting it out again and it will be run here in Christchurch from my home. So it's a Friday night and then two full days, Saturday, Sunday. It's a wonderful experience. So it's in the newsletter, you read up if you want to email me and ask questions by all means. Um, it, the places are limited, it's a really intense workshop. So the places are limited on this one. But for those of you who are looking for new tools, who maybe want to break some of those habits that we've created, the comfort zone, then this might be something for you. Um, and then, of course, we have our spiritual clinic. And I really pushed some people's buttons. It was interesting. I, I, I had the topic of expectations. And for quite a few people, they thought it was about the expectations we place on ourselves. Whereas I've taken the word 
outside self and applied it to so what do we expect to ha happen when we think a thought what is our expected outcome if we manifest what is our expected outcome how can we change our expectations to manifest what we want so that was the angle I took it from whereas other people were expecting not living up to their own personal expectations not living up to other people's expectations whether that's family friends strangers whoever that is so we're going to do expectations mark two and we're we're going to talk about this uh, inward look at expectations, about personal boundaries. I'm going to just sort of change the, uh, the workshop up a little bit. We're going to do our group sessions, um, break into our breakout rooms um, very early on in the evening. Then I'll get a feedback to see what people are struggling with. So I can really wrap the meditation around that healing, healing those personal boundary issues and using some theta healing techniques to give you the knowing, the understanding of how to set your own expectations, how to create boundaries, how to say no. So it should be really, it should be really quite in depth. So another tool, another way of getting tools that might be changing some of those old familiar habits that really no longer serve a purpose in your life. So it's all go on a healing, a healing angle as we move through into August and September. As with everything, the Reiki classes are still going ahead in August and October. And um, the online courses, you can book online at any time um, to experience your own self-development and to work on your, at your own pace in your own time. So thank you so much for listening to me talking away here. I hope to see you soon, um, if not in a physical class, maybe as an online student, or maybe as part of our Advanced Reiki Healing course in September. It's going to be an amazing course. I know it's going to be amazing. So until the next time, take care for now and be good to yourself and be kind to yourself. Bye for now.